All right, hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about logarithmic differentiation, which is a bit of an extension from AP calculus, right? It's not a topic that is tested on the AP exam, but it is a very common topic in a lot of Calculus 1 courses. But before I do any of these derivative problems, I need to remind you of a, spe a specific log property that we're going to be making quite a bit of use of here. And that's if you have the log of some base to some exponent, we can swing that exponent around and multiply it in front of the log. Okay, this is related to the fact that x to the a to the b is equal to x to the a times b. And if you think about logs actually being the exponents, what does that mean? Well, it, it, you know, it's related to that. Now, I'm not going to this in a video about log properties, so I'm not going to really get into why it's true, but I'm going to remind you that these two things are true so that we can find some derivative. All right, so the first example I've got is the derivative of x to the x, which is something that, I mean, it's not a super common function, but it's not anything crazy or wild or unheard of to take x to the x power, but we don't take its derivative in, you know, a normal AP calculus class. It's like, why is that? Okay. It's because it just requires one extra step. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off by saying, well, I'm going to call this y and just search for dy dx. Okay. But before taking the derivative of both sides of this equation, I'm going to hit it with a log property. So I'm going to say the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x to the x, right? But I know that log property will allow me to take that x and swing it around the front. And so I've got x times the log of x. And maybe, you know, if I don't have that anymore, I could just, uh oh I could just say x log x without the parentheses. It's pretty obvious what I'm taking the log of. Now I can take the derivative of both sides of this equation implicitly with respect to x. Now you know that the derivative of natural log of y with respect to x is 1 over, leave the inside the same, 1 over y dy dx. Just observing the chain. And the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. I'll leave log x the same. Then I'll add leaving x the same, taking the derivative of natural log of x. So that'll be x times 1 over x is just going to be 1. Okay. So I can solve for dy dx by multiplying both sides by y. And maybe I'll say that's 1 plus the log of x, just again, so I don't need an extra set of parentheses, and you're not confused about what I'm actually taking the log of. Am I taking the log of x? Am I taking the log of x plus 1? It's more obvious that way. Now we're looking for the derivative of x to the x with respect to x. So that should be in terms of x only, right? It shouldn't have y's in there. But we already have a formula for y, right? I can get rid of this thing by saying, wait a second, y is equal to x to the x. So I can say that this is equal to x to the x times 1 plus the natural log of x. Okay. And so in conclusion, I'm going to say that that'll be x to the x times 1 plus log of x. So that's a good example. Okay, so the other example I've got for you is the derivative of square root of x to the sine of x. And you might notice that this technique is really most helpful to evaluate derivatives of the form f of x to the g of x power. That's, that's really it. If you've got x's in both the base and the exponent, that's where you're going to need to use logarithmic differentiation. Okay, so let's just attack this the exact same way I did before. I'm going to say, uh, maybe I'll call it y equals square root of x to the sine of x power. And I'm sure there's other ways that we could do this, you know, calling it x to the one half sine x. Hey, that would also work. I'm just going to kind of leave it as it's written, though. All right, and that means that I can take the natural log of both sides. And then I'll use that exponent or that log property. So that'll be sine of x times the natural log of the square root of x. natural log of 
x to the one half. Yeah. And you know, I mean, it's just ah, fine. Whatever. I mean, there's you know, you could apply that same log property I've been applying to bring that one half around the front if you wanted. But if you don't want to, and I think I'm just not going to, I think it'll be just the same like this. So I take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, just like I did last time. dy dx equals take the derivative of sine of x, leave the other thing the same, then add in, leaving sine of x the same, taking the derivative of log of square root of x. Well, that's going to be 1 over the square root of x times the derivative of square root of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. That's interesting. Okay, and that's still not enough room to entirely fit it in there. And I'm going to need to simplify this. So I'm going to kind of oh, okay. say 1 over y dy dx equals cosine x log square root x plus that x to the negative half is going to go down the denominator and become a square root of x and combine with the square root of x that's already in the denominator and make an entire power of x. Okay, so I'm going to have sine x divided by 2 for the 1 half and the x for the combined square roots. Okay, then I'm going to say, well, actually solve for dy dx. And that's going to where I'm going to multiply y over here onto the cosine x log square root of x plus sine of x divided by 2x and multiply by y, which was square root of x sine x. Now this, along with all of the normal derivative taking techniques that you learned in the AP calculus class, together I'm pretty sure open up all of the derivatives to closed form functions. I'm pretty sure that it, at this point, if you know how to do logarithmic differentiation and you know how to do all the stuff from AP Calculus, then if you can write down the formula for the function in terms of x, then you can take its derivative also. All right, so in conclusion, let's talk about all of the derivative rules that go around, you know, exponential scenarios. So suppose a and b are two real numbers. I'm going to be interested in the derivatives of, I think, four things, a to the b, x to the a, Let's hold on, uh, a to the x, and x to the x. This is kind of like all the different combinations of these that we could get. Okay, The derivative of a to the b, a and b are real numbers, so that's equal to 0 because it's the derivative of a constant. The derivative of x to the a power, that's where we're going to bring down a and subtract 1 from the power. That's the power rule. Okay, The derivative of a to the x is going to be a to the x times the natural log of a. That's the rule of derivatives. And in this video, I showed you how the derivative of x to the x is x to the x times 1 plus natural log of x. And this is what requires logarithmic differentiation. Uh oh. Yep, went off the screen, but I can always make those. All right, and that's going to be all I've got for this video.